Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to uh, discuss uh, the blood flow uh, for the heart, uh, more specifically, the coronary vessels. So the blood, or the heart needs its own blood supply, and the coronary vessels, so the arteries supply the oxygenated blood, and then the deoxygenated blood is drained from the heart into um, the right atrium. So uh, in my previous lecture, I went over the entire uh, blood flow of the heart, and one thing that I mentioned was coming off of the ascending aorta. So if you look at this right here, so this is the ascending aorta. This is where the right and the left coronary arteries uh, branch from. So obviously the right is on this side and then the left one uh, comes from here. So uh, what I have drawn up here, this is a schematic of how the um, blood vessels diverge and then um, how they're going to uh, converge as well. Okay, so coming off of the ascending aorta, you have, so this is number one. So number one is the ascending aorta. And number two, so number two, this is the left coronary artery. And then this over here, this will be number three. This is the right coronary artery. So they're diverging they're diverging to the right and to the left. And then if we work here on the right side, so I'll put right and then I'll put left on this side. So if we're on the right side, this one that's here on the front, so if you look at it, the model here, this is what's branching this way. So this is what's known as the, so I'm gonna put number four right here. So number four is the marginal artery. Or they have, this is the right marginal artery. And then the one that wraps around the back side, so this is number five, this is the posterior interventricular artery. I'm not going to write artery out. I'm just going to write posterior interventricular. So we already know that it's an artery. So posterior interventricular, that's if you look at the model here coming off of the right side, that's what's going to be found here on the back, posterior interventricular. Okay. So now that we have the right side down, we're going to work towards the left side. So coming up, branching off the left coronary, this one that's um, here in the front, this is what we know as the anterior interventricular artery. And they also call it the left anterior um, descending artery. So that's, so this will be number six because it's here in the front. So then uh, number seven, this is the one that wraps around the backside. So this is what's known as the circumflex. So the circumflex branches off of the um, left coronary artery. And then if you look at it here, you can see it. Um, so the circumflex is wrapping around this way around the heart to the backside. Okay, so now that we have a, a general schematic here, uh, one other thing I want to mention is that, so the posterior and the anterior interventricular artery, they have what's known as an anastomosis, so they will merge together. So the posterior interventricular comes around the backside and then they converge here. Okay, so they converge together uh, through an anastomosis. Okay, so let's talk about the blood supply for these different areas of, of the heart. So coming off the ascending aorta, this is supplying blood to the body, right? It's going to the rest of the body. For the left coronary artery, this is just branching. So it just branches, so that way it can give its um, blood supply. Um, but before I get into the rest of the details of the blood supply and everything, uh, one thing we need uh, to go over is that, so what is it, obviously these coronary arteries are supplying blood to the heart, but the region in particular is what's known as the myocardium. So the myocardium, that's this, I can screw this over here. So that is this thick layer that's uh, here in the heart. So this muscle tissue needs its oxygen and nutrients 
in order for the contraction of the heart to occur. So these uh, coronary arteries, they sit in what's known as the sulcus. And so the sulcus is like these little troughs where, so if you, kind of like an analogy. So whenever they have to lay pipe, they dig a trough and then they lay the pipe in there. So it's a similar, it's a similar thing here with the heart because if we were to rip these, you know, arteries off the coronary arteries, you would see these little ditches or these little troughs here where the blood vessels are going to sit or the arteries. And it's supplying blood to the myocardium so it can pump blood to the, um, to the rest of the body. Okay, so what does the right coronary artery supply um, blood to? So for the right coronary artery, you have the right atrium as well as the ventricle. So right atrium and ventricle. So then the next one is the right marginal artery. So the right marginal artery supplies blood to the right ventricle. And this is going to be on the lateral side, so lateral. So moving onward, so both of these are similar in that they supply blood to the interventricular septum as well as the ventricles. Because if you look at the location, they're um, going down. Once again, this is on the back side, this is on the front side. But the difference is, is that for posterior, it's supplying blood for the posterior interventricular septum and ventricles. And then for anterior, it's obviously the anterior. Anterior, posterior. And the last one that we have here is the one that wraps around. So that is the uh, circumflex. And so the circumflex, it branches from the left side. So it supplies blood to the left. So to the left atrium and ventricles. And this is going to be on the posterior side. Okay, so that's it for the blood supply for the coronary vessels. The next thing we need to go over is the schematic here of the veins. So number one, this is what's going to represent the great cardiac vein. So you have the great cardiac vein. This is the anterior view. So if you look at the heart, this is the great cardiac vein. You can see that there are these three branches coming from it, and then it comes down this way. There's also another one. So this is what's wrapping around. So this is the great cardiac vein. And then it goes to merge at this particular um, vessel. So number two, this is known as the coronary sinus. So the coronary sinus is very important because if you look at this diagram, you'll see that all three of these blood vessels here, all of these veins, they're merging at this particular point because the coronary sinus, this is what drains blood into the right atrium. So the coronary sinus drains blood from the for the entire heart because they're all converging at that point. So then this one that's here on the right side, number three, this is the small cardiac vein. And then number four here, this is the middle cardiac vein. So if you kind of look at the schematic, you'll see that there's some overlapping. So for instance, number one, the great cardiac vein, it's right, it's right next to the anterior, the LAD. So that's what's shown here on the model. You can see the LAD coming down this way and then the great cardiac vein, it's overlapping it right there. And then another one to consider as well is um, number four. So that's the middle cardiac vein, which sits right next to the posterior interventricular. So that's here on the back side. So if you look at it, you can see both of them right next to each other. Okay. So now let's look at what do each of these um, 
what do they drain? So for the great cardiac vein, this drains the right and the left ventricles. And this is gonna be on the anterior side. The middle cardiac vein is for the right and the left ventricles, but it's on the posterior side. So then the small cardiac vein, it's on the right side, so it drains the right, the right ventricle on the lateral side. Okay, so um, one other blood vessel that's not included on here is the anterior cardiac vein. And so I'll show it just, I'll show it here on the model, but that's what this one is. So this is a blood vessel that drains directly into the right atrium. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this lecture.